EQ on drums can make a huge difference in how they sound. They can go from flabby to cannon-like, and it's awesome when you get it right. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I apply EQ on drums on the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 console. In the previous video, we talked about gain, balance, the polarity switch, and setting up your high pass filter. So we're gonna take it up a notch from here and apply our other four bands of EQ, and I'll let you watch and see how I approach a drum kit. Hey, if you're new here, my name is James and I help worship leaders, sound techs, and church tech directors eliminate the mystery and frustration around sound at church. So if that's you and you wanna grow in your skills and serve with excellence on the soundboard at church, you found the right place, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can hear about future videos and welcome to the club of sound ninjas. And with that, let's jump over to the board. Each drum has its fundamental frequency, it's got mid-range that I usually wanna dump out or at least address. And then it's got the stick attack or the beater attack for the case of the kick drum. Nestled in the low mids is something that happens with everything that's got kind of a resonant head and it happens around 250 Hertz and it just feels flabby. So I often will cut that and I usually like it better when I have it cut. And it's not like the most monumentous change in the world, but I prefer it without it more than with it. So we're gonna go for the fundamental frequency to boost it. We're gonna cut 250. We're going to boost around four or 5K if we need to, to get more stick attack. And if we want it to sound like rock and roll, we're gonna cut some in the mid range. And this frequency shifts with the size and tuning of the drum. Higher drums are gonna be more around six, 700 Hertz. If you've got a really small tom, lower drums like floor toms are gonna be more around 400 Hertz. Kick drums too. The snare has some interesting things that happen right around there, depending on how it's dampened. Sometimes it's ringing more than you want it to, and the temptation is to get rid of it with EQ. The better way to solve it is to use some dampening if you can. So there's that, and you've just gotta work with your drummer on that one. So let me just do it. I'll probably put some annotations up on the screen while I am, but get your headphones and listen as I try to EQ these drums and get them a little bit more impact and again, with the kick drum up, I'm actually gonna have the bass with it too, because those have to lock in in order for it to lock in with the rest of the band. This is the one I really like cutting, especially while I'm listening to the bass. Let me bypass it and see what happens with the bass guitar. I love cutting that frequency. All right, so if I need some more attack, I'll go to about 4K. We could make it brighter. We could take it up if we wanted to go more metal, but that's not usually the style we're having at church. But yours might. See how that's really, really snappy? Not what I love. That feels about right. If it's more soft rock, which this song is not, but maybe at your church, uh, somewhere around 2K can give you that feeling. So that's a gentler kind of beater sound, right around 2K. Let's turn off the EQ and see what it's like. I'm liking that. All right, let's go on to the snare drum. Okay, so it snaps a little bit more, and that's what I like. Now you could do something like that with the snare bottom, but I'm just trying to get the snares sound. We already heard that. So with the high pass filter, that might be enough. 
Before we move on, I want to tell you about my live mixing field guide book and ebook. It's got a lot of the starting places that I start with, with EQ, compression, and effects on all different types of instruments that you're likely to find at church. These aren't presets in the way that you wouldn't set it up exactly like it looks on the page and then you'd get great results. They're my starting places and places where I'm going to focus on with my EQ and starting places with my compression so that I can get it dialed in quickly and understand what it should sound like in these different parts of the frequency spectrum on different instruments. You can pick up your copy today at livemixingfieldguide.com. Also, if you're taking notes on this video and trying to figure out how to apply this on your your board, go ahead and comment down below what console you have, and I'll hopefully be able to borrow it and get another video out for you on your console. I've got some great friends over at Zounds. They let me borrow basically anything that I want. If they carry it, they can ship it to me and I can make a video for you. So comment down below which console you have and visit Zounds through my affiliate link. When you purchase stuff through there, it generates a small commission for me at no extra cost for you. So it's one way that you can say thanks and support the channel. Okay, that's enough promotion. Let's go back to EQing the drums. here, a little less bright. See what it sounds like on this fill coming up. I'm gonna make this a little narrower. All right, let's bypass the low Tommy EQ and listen to that. And again, with our overheads, we're just gonna leave it with just the high pass filter. because I feel like that's doing what I want it to do. I'm gonna add a little bit more low end back on that low tom. And that's feeling good. Hey, if this video has been helpful for you, go ahead and mash that thumbs up to let the YouTube algorithm know. And be sure to subscribe and don't ding the little bell because you don't need any more notifications in your life. Be sure to check out the other videos in this playlist where we go over compression, gating, effects, and all the balance and high pass filter stuff. As always, remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.